Hello everyone, my name is Maxim Dosta and in this short introductional video I want to illustrate how you can perform simulation, the M simulation in the simulation frame we're using. So let's first of all open empty instance of a program. Now we see here the main graphical user interface and we see a lot of buttons which are inactive. Before you can uh, perform any simulations or analysis of scenes or any other actions, it's necessary to save the file or create a new one. In this case, we will create a new scene and save it as a new file. So now I have saved it and I see here the name of a new file. With this, in this illustration example, I want to show how we can perform simulation of one of the classical problems solved with the discrete event method, it's seal empty. In order to do that, in the first stage we will add geometry of a silo. Let's look now how the work with geometries is organized in Musen. Let's take a look to following scheme. It is possible to add to a specific simulation file, to a specific scene, two types of geometries. This can be either real geometry or analysis volume. The real geometries, these are geometries which are really presented in a scene and they exist at the contact between particles and these geometries. Second type of the volumes, these are analysis volumes. This type of volumes are used for supplementary purposes, like for example to perform analysis of particles which are situated in a specific zone or for example to generate particles into specific. Independently on the type of geometry, there exist uh, also two different types of pre geometrical primitives. This can be standard geometrical primitives, like box, cylinder, sphere, hollow sphere. The dimensions and the, the parameters of them you can specify directly in the user interface. And in Musen you have a separate file where the geometries are stored, so-called geometries database. You can add any STL a file to this geometry database and later on use it in our simulation. Now let's come back to our Musen and let's see our geometries database. In the database tab I can pick geometries and I see here my geometry database which is open and a set of geometrical primitives which are available in it. I can add to new geometries from STA files and remove them or scale them down or scale them up. For these calculations I will use following geometry seal large orifice. Now in order to insert the element from geometry database to current scene or to perform any operations with the current scene to modify geometries, we go to the tab scene and here we go to tab geometries editor. Here you see the tab where you can add either real or analysis volume. In this case we will add one real geometry and we will pick silo large orifice. Now we have added and we can modify the properties of that. At least this geometry is, has huge dimensions, that's why what I will do, I will scale it down in 1000 times. Afterwards I will specify the center point of it and position the center into center of coordinate system. Now I can look on to my geometry and I can scale on zoom a scene automatically to the current representation. So in the next step I want to add one additional box element, one additional plate in order to close these holes which is, exist in this silo. In order to do that, I will go back to the geometries editor and will add real geometry and in this case I will use standard geometry and this will be a box. Now I will define the position of that as well as size of it. So I will define width of it is like 0 0.3, depth 0 0.2, and height 0, 0, 1, so it will be very thin wall. Now I should shift it downwards, so that's why I will decrease the coordinate, set coordinate of it, make it position it a little bit lower, 
And now after set of adjustment steps, I specify correct position of it. So please keep in mind that in Musen there is no contact detection between the geometry elements. That's why it is not a problem if you will have overlap between geometries. Now in the next step, what I want to do, I want to generate my primary particles. In order to perform generation of them, I will use so-called packet generator. Here, in a scene, there exist packet generator and bond generator. These tools allow for us to generate packings uh, of primary particles as well as generate bonds between the primary particles. But prior to generation of primary particles, I need uh, first of all to specify where these particles should be generated and in the second stage I need to specify which particles should be generated. First of all, let's proceed with the first stage, let's define geometry where the particles should be generated. In order to do that, I will go to the Geometry editor, and in this case I will add so-called Analysis volume. And I will use Cylinder to generate the particles. So here I see my generation domain, which will afterwards used, and as before I will modify the properties of it. Now I specified its position and its dimension. In the next stage, what I want to do, I want to add my particles. But before I can do that, it is necessary to define materials. For this purpose, there exists the material database, which works uh, similar to the geometries database. Here it is possible to open database, where you have specific set of compounds. You can define the properties of these compounds. You can add a new compounds. Uh, you can modify the properties. Like for example, you can set the density of particles and uh, you can set uh, various properties like Young's modulus, normal strength, Poisson ratio, surface energy. Please keep in mind that not all of these parameters will be used during calculations. Everything will depend on the type of the model which will be used. Like, for example, if you will use a JKR model, then the surface energy parameter will play the role. Otherwise, if you will use hertz minion model, this parameter will be not used during calculations. Similar in the case of strengths. The normal and tangential strengths will play a role only if you will perform simulation with the solid bonds. So these are the basic material properties, and you can define interaction properties. Some of the properties like restitution coefficient, sliding friction, or rolling friction coefficient, these are interaction properties and should be defined for each pair of materials. So now we'll use default values. And the last part, here you can define the mixtures. The mixture, and we will define a new one, mix new. Here the mixture can consist of particles with different sizes and different materials, different compounds. So in this case we will define the mixture will consist of polymer particles with diameter 4.1 millimeters and 4.2 millimeter. We we'll have 80% of particles with a diameter 4.1 millimeter and 20% of particles with diameter 4.2 millimeter. Now I can save database. This was a global database where you define the material properties. Now if you want to use them uh, or during the simulation on the current scene, then you go to scene and go to the materials editor. Here you see the set of materials which are currently used for this scene because the global database can contain hundreds of materials. Here you can select only the material which are important for you. Now, for, in order to perform simulation, I will pick steel, which I will use for my geometries, and I will use polymer for my particles. Also, I will add mixture which I need. It will be mix new. Already here, I can define the default values which were defined in the uh, global database. For example, for current simulation, I will modify the density of particles and set it to 2.1 thousand kilogram per meter cubic. 
Now if I define everything properly, I can go to the package generator and define a new package generator. With help of the package generator, it is possible to perform a generation of packing of primary particles into specific volume. Now I pick the volume where I want to generate the particles and I specify the mixture. In this case, I set the porosity of the packing, which uh, I want to reach. And automatically I see the number of the particles which will be generated. In this case, I will use initial porosity equal to 0 0.55, then uh, the 104,000 particles will be generated. The generation can be done either on CPU or on GPU. Now, if, for example, I will pick CPU to generate particles. So also you can specify additional properties like max overlap or max iteration number. In the documentation you can find more detailed description of all of these properties. So after a specific period of time the packing is generated and now I can see my particles. If I will enable its, their visibility then I see my particles which are situated in the volume. Here in the view tab it is possible to hide specific geometries, uh, change their capacity, uh, as well as cut view by x, y, or z axis. Let's jump to the next stage. So now we will perform simulation of how particles will drop down to bottom of a cell. Before we can do this simulation, it is necessary also to define materials for our real geometries. That's why we will go to Sin Geometries Editor. And for silo, as well as for box, we will pick material steel. From point of view of sense specification, we are finished. Now we can perform simulation. Now we can perform a simulation, but before we start with it, it's necessary to specify additional parameters. First of all, one of the main parameters it is simulation time step. The simulation time step is strongly depends on the stiffness and size of the particles as well as the, on the density. And here you see the recommended time step. So for these calculations, we will use the recommended time step and specify it as 1.6 microsecond. Second parameter it is saving step. How often we want to save this scene? I will specify. Uh, that we want to save the data after each 0.1 second and we want to perform simulation until 0.5 second. Next uh, important parameter is external acceleration. Simulation domain is the domain where all objects are situated. As soon as particle or wall will uh, be outside of this domain, it will be not uh, considered during simulation. In this case, I will automatically recalculate the main. Next important parameter is where you perform simulation, either on CPU or on GPU. In this case, I will pick GPU. And last but not least, it is necessary to define the interaction models. In this case, we will use one interaction model for interparticle contact and one interaction model for particle wall contact. For both situations, I will use Earth's mainland model. So if we have specified everything correctly, we can start simulations. So now the simulation is finished and we can look to the simulation results. So with the time slider, we can jump between uh, save time points. So we specify that we want to have saving time interval 0.1 seconds. That's why we can jump uh, between them. You can pick any arbitrary time point, but please keep in mind that uh, the values for this time point are obtained based on the interpolation. So now we will just jump to the last time point, to the time point 0.5 seconds. Now we want to continue simulation and to open the um, openings of the silo. In order to do that, it is necessary to use a following feature. It is necessary to save file and create a new data snapshot. Let's look now how the work is organized in Musen with the time points. Now we have performed simulation for specific time interval and we have specific save time points. In the Musen you cannot continue simulation but what is possible you can pick arbitrary time point, save this time point as a snapshot 
and perform new simulations. This is what we will do now. We will pick time point 0 0.5 seconds. So we'll save this file as a snapshot. Now I've just opened this snapshot where we see the same scene, but we have no active time points, so we have no data points uh, additionally to the time point zero. Now what we will do, we go to the geometries editor, pick our box and remove it. Now we remove the box and can perform a simulation. For these calculations I will use the same parameter as before, but I will increase the frequency of a saving. So I will save the data after each 0 0.02 uh, um, seconds. And I will perform simulation until uh, 0 0.3 seconds. So now the simulation is finished and we can analyze the simulation results. So for this purpose I will just cut the view and we can jump through the time and see what's happened within the system. Now it's possible to color particles according to the velocity. You can specify the minimal and maximal values. This can be automatically specified limits or you can specify it by yourself. You can pick the colors like uh, change them. You can pick any uh, property uh, which uh, should be used to color particles. Afterwards, you have possibility to analyze simulation results, generate images, set of images to create a video.